Hello, uh, my name is Nicolas, and I will talk to you about my research on pre-stressed cold form steel beams, which I conduct at Imperial College London under the supervision of Professor Leroy Gardner and Professor Aimer Wadi. I will focus on the mechanics governing the behavior of the proposed beams, their modeling, and the design recommendations that we um, developed. First of all, though, I would like to start with this picture. What's special about this picture is the fact that most people don't really notice the two buildings at the back. I took this picture uh, back in May when I was in Milan, and I find it quite inspiring because it reminds me of the fact that as structural engineers, we really need and we can um, come up with new solutions for the construction industry. Solutions that are more innovative and solutions that have positive impact uh, on the environment and on the society in general. So our effort in coming up with such a solution is based on two principles. Principle number one is pre-stressing. Principle number two is coal from steel. So principle number one. I'm sure most people in this room are familiar with pre-stressing in the case of pre-stressed concrete structures, where effectively we're using cables to overcome the weak tensile performance of concrete by imposing stresses within the members that are opposite in sign to the ones that are in use during loading. However, in the 50s, uh, Gustav Maniel realized that uh, pre-stressing steel can offer similar benefits. For example, here you can see a uh, pre-stressed st uh, steel truss where the cables are located within the bottom core of the truss. So that's principle number one. Principle number two, coal from steel. So coal from steel members are formed from thin steel sheets uh, through a set of rollers and they're primarily used in uh, wall systems, uh, floors, and roofs as secondary members or as primary members. And their advantages include high strength to weight ratios and the fact that they are lightweight. However, because of their thin wall geometry, um, uh, uh, coal from steel members are highly susceptible to local instability, such as local buckling and distortional buckling. Uh, local buckling is characterized by the buckling of the individual plates of the section, and distortional buckling is characterized by the movement of the junction between the individual plates. For example, here you can see that the, bottom, the, the junction between the flanges and the leaves have moved. For this reason, these members usually buckle at uh, stresses below the yield stress of the material, and therefore they're typically designed as class four members. So in our proposal, we are, um, ha we're having a, a coal from steel beam with a bottom hollow flange which houses the pre-stressing cable. The cable is effectively anchored at the two ends of the beam, and then it's pretensioned. And we have two loading stages. Loading one, uh, lo uh, stage one is the pre-stressing, where effectively, because of the eccentricity of the cable, we get a pre-camber along the member. And then stage two is the, the, we impose vertical loading until the failure of the member takes place. In this case, the member has failed due to distortional buckling, However, because of the pre-stressing that we have applied, we have actually managed to delay this buckling effect and therefore enable the member to carry greater load before failing. To understand how these beams work, let's look a bit at the mechanics. So here we have the cross-section of the beam, the cable in the, within the bottom flange. Um, so the pre-stressing force is transferred at the location of the cable. That's at a lever arm from the major centroidal axis of the beam. And this is equivalent to concentric compression plus hogging moment. So if we look at the axial stress distributions at the midspan, we have a uniform compression component from the concentric compression and a negative bending distribution from the eccentricity at which the pre-stressing force is applied. So our bending moment diagram is just uniform hogging because of the bending component. And the overall stress distribution is tension at the top and compression at the bottom. It is because of these tensile stresses that we get the increased capacity, as you'll see later, because these stresses have to be overcome during the subsequent loading stage. As I said before, we have a pre camber along the member. So on our moment deflection diagram, we are located here. We haven't applied any vertical loading yet. Um, so we're at zero moments and then negative deflections at midspan because of the pre camber. So uh, stage number two, we apply the vertical loading. We already have the initial stresses from the previous stage. So now we apply the vertical loading along the member, and typically we get compression at the top of the member and tension at the bottom. 
but we also get two more components because of the fact that as the beam deflects, uh, the cable gets stretched further because it's located within the tension zone of the section, and therefore we get these two additional components that are of the same nature as the ones during the pre-stressing. So this is the overall stress distribution at the end of stage two, and our bending moment diagram becomes this, where the hogging comes from the pre-stressing, and the sagging moment comes from the vertical load. So on our moment deflection diagram now, as we apply moments so or moving up, uh, the deflection starts to, the, the beam starts deflecting downwards, so the, the, the deflections go to the right. At some point at zero, we, re we reach the initial position of the beam, and this continues until the failure of the beam. In this case, if the beam failed due to distortional buckling. Um, if we compare the results against a bare steel beam, that is just the beam with no cable inside, we can see that the pre-stress beam was able to achieve greater capacity than the bare steel. And uh, we can represent this benefit from pre-stressing with the dotted area on the bending moment diagram, where effectively it, it, it uh, illustrates the cancellation of the bending moment that we apply during stage two. In terms of users, um, these beams can be, can be used as lightweight structural solutions in the cases where we need, we need increased load cutting capacities and decreased deflections. And in my opinion, they can open up new possibilities for coal from steel in general. So in this example, we've managed to decrease the overall deflections by around 50% and to increase the capacity by around 20%. Uh, it should also be noted that we have developed a theoretical model um, where we, we are able to predict the linear elastic behavior of the beam during both stages, and this is represented by the dashed uh, diagonal lines on the graph. Also, we've developed design predictions, uh, which are represented by the horizontal dashed lines and are used to predict the capacity of the beam. I will talk a bit more about the design later on. In terms of modeling, we've used uh, finite element modeling, and I will focus on two main features of the model. Feature number one is the initial geometric imperfections, uh, which aim at triggering the critical buckling mode of the cold from steel beam, which typically takes place at the lowest stress levels. Um, we have accounted for, any, for all the loading stages and, and all the different loading combinations. So these imperfections have been uh, imposed on the initially perfect geometry of the cold from steel beam. And as a result, you can see here the magnified version of the beam after the, imp the imperfections were imposed. <clears throat> the second feature is the connection between the beam and the cable. So we have the anchorage at the two beam ends, uh, where we assume that the cable is completely tied to the coal from steel beam to enable a uniform transfer of the pre-stressing force into the member. And also we have the connection between the beam and the cable along the member. Here we assume that the cable is kept concentric to the bo uh, bottom uh, hollow flange and also that the cable is allowed to elongate freely along the member in order to keep the, the axial force in the cable constant. In terms of design, it's important to realize that because of these beams um, are subjected to a combination of bending and axial force during both stages, they can be treated as beam columns. And for these reasons, we have adapted existing design methods, namely the linear interaction equations to uh, where the numerator are the net axial force and net bending moment at the critical section of the beam. And then the denominator is the predicted capacity, which we predict using the direct strength method. The, the design checks have to be performed for both the steel and the cable during both stages. You can represent the design predictions on an axial force versus, versus bending moment diagram, where the, the diagonal lines represent the design prediction. So in stage one, we're applying pre-stressing, so we're moving up, and then we get some hogging moment, and this continues until we hit the design surface, which defines the maximum pre-stress loading. And then in, page, in stage two, we apply the vertical loading, so we move to the right, and we get some more uh, additional pre-stressing until the failure of the beam takes place. Here, uh, note that the fact that the finite element result is located outside the surface indicates that the design, the if the finite element model was able to achieve greater loading than the design prediction and therefore can be considered to be safe. Currently, we are performing a number of parametric studies to investigate the effect of key parameters. Here, for example, you can see that as we apply more and more pre-stressing, 
we get higher precumber and increased capacities. And up to now, we've been able to show that we can get uh, an enhancements in capacity of up to 40% and decrease in the overall deflections of up to 65%. We can use these parametric studies to uh, assess the design recommendations. Here, again, we have the axial force versus bending moment diagram, where the diagonal, like, diagonal line represents the design prediction. Uh, we've performed a, a number of combinations of beam geometries, cable sizes, and priesters levels. So down there, you can see the bare steel beam results. So we have no pre-stressing, just bending moment, then different beam geometries, different cable sizes, and then different pre-stress levels. Again, because of the fact that the finite element results are located outside the design surface, it means that the uh, finite element model was able to carry greater loading than the one predicted. And therefore, we can um, uh, conclude that in general, the design recommendations are safe. I want to finish up with a simulation of the proposed beams. Where effectively, here we apply the pre-stressing, so we get the pre-camber along the member, have tension at the top, that's a gray color, and then compression at the bottom. Now, stage two, we start applying the vertical loading. At some point, we'll reach the initial position of the beam. So we have compression at the top now being imposed, tension at the bottom, and we can see some uh, buckling starting to form along the member. And this continues until the ultimate capacity of the beam is reached, and then the member fails due to buckling. To conclude, we've developed a simple yet novel concept where the uh, capacity and serviceability performance of the coal from steel beams can be enhanced. We've developed a theoretical model, a finite element model, and also conducted a series of parametric studies to investigate the effect of key parameters. And then we have adapted existing design methods to enable the design of the proposed beams, showing that this uh, method can be used safely. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.